Study after study shows that students who can pay attention longer without becoming distracted have higher GPAs. The daughter of Mary Curie said that her mother was so focused at one point that other students built an arch of chairs around her while she was studying. And she never noticed this arch of chair for hours and hours until at one point she sat up from her studying and knocked the arch of chairs over. And this was because she was just so focused on the work she was doing. From the science of metacognition to the art of finding the perfect biological time for yourself where you can focus the most. In this video, I'll give you 11 advanced tips to revolutionize your focus. And step number one is to pay attention to metacognition. And what is metacognition? Well, metacognition is simply being aware of your cognition, aware of your thoughts. And this is often used in meditation, right? To pay attention to what we're paying attention to, but it can also be used to maximize your focus. One paper compared students who were aware of their motivation for learning, so aware of what they were thinking, and students who simply were not, students who were studying because they had to study. And the motivated students, the students that were aware of why they were studying, performed better. And this isn't surprising. However, we're never taught this in school. No one instructs us that, listen, you should pay attention to how you're thinking about things and why you're thinking about things. It kind of becomes drilled into us in school that, you know, you focus and you study because you have to do it. And there's a free evidence-based chart of guidelines that I strongly recommend you go check out, which is from psychologists and researchers who've been studying this stuff for decades, and they found out kind of ways to maximize your performance by using metacognition, and I'll link to that somewhere in this video. But in general, here are some of the best tips that I saw. So number one, use metacognitive regulation. Plan how you will obtain your learning goals, Monitor your progress while studying or taking a test. Am I spending too long on this question? Am I spending too long on this problem? Then evaluate your preparation for an exam and your performance and studying focus. Was one strategy better than another? Should I change strategies? Was I able to focus better and learn more with this strategy versus another one? When you face a tough challenge or task, Evaluate what actually made that task challenging or difficult. How did you break through this challenge eventually? How did you achieve focus? How can you implement this technique that you just learned, right, in future sessions where you need to focus? Pay attention to these moments when you lose focus. Maybe that's a phone call. Maybe that's a noise outside. Maybe that's a certain song that came on your studying playlist. And also pay attention to when you're in this laser focus mode. Maybe it's a certain playlist. Maybe you're in a certain environment. Maybe the temperature around you is different. Maybe you're wearing certain clothes. Maybe there are ways that you're thinking about the problem that are making you laser focused. And finally, imagine if you were a teacher teaching yourself. What would your teacher, you the teacher, say to yourself? Are you working too hard? Are you not working hard enough? Are you focusing on the wrong things? Or are you spending too much time on one subject when you should be splitting your time evenly between subjects? Okay, so overall, be aware of what you're thinking and pay attention to when you're focused and when you're not focused. Tip number two is to optimize air and light quality. In one study, students' concentration was tested in three environments. One was controlled with normal mechanical ventilation and windows opened, as usual. A worse condition, where mechanical ventilation was down-regulated and window opening was not allowed, with a CO2 level goal of 2,000 to 2,500 parts per million and a better condition when mechanical ventilation was upregulated and CO2 was targeted at less than 1,000 parts per million. There were significant differences between the worse condition and the better condition. Students in the worse condition, that is having that higher levels of CO2, made twice as many errors as the students in the better condition, that is having lower levels of CO2 in the room. Well, how can we implement these findings to improve our focus? Well, really, we want to reduce the CO2 in our room in any way we can, right? This could be making sure we have ventilation on in our room, and if we're in a city, keeping the windows closed. But if we're in a less polluted city, maybe we can keep the windows open, but also have the ventilation on. And you can find CO2 monitors on Amazon to kind of look at this if you want to get real nerdy about it. Finally, lighting is important for our focus too. When people's environments are improperly lit, their productivity suffers. Daylight is the highest quality of light for productivity and performance. However, if you need to use artificial light, the research shows that a color temperature of around 4,000 degrees Kelvin is optimal, as well as a light reading, so that's in lux, so that's just level or how bright the light is, of around 500 to 1,000, with detailed or precision work working best at kind of 1,500 to 2,000 
2000 lux. So overall, try and make sure your workstation is near a window. Uh, but if you're not near a window or if it's not very sunny outside, right, you should turn on an artificial light, aim for around 4000 degrees Kelvin and about 1000 lux. Tip number three is to embrace flow theory. So why does achieving focus have to be this drawn out, complicated, tiresome process? When in some scenarios, it can be magic. And the specific magical scenarios I'm referring to is flow state. And flow state is achieved when we're at this perfect amount of kind of expertise and challenge. So if you imagine on the X axis, you have expertise and on the Y axis, you have challenge. Imagine in the top right corner, there's this magical space where expertise is high and challenge is high. This is where we hit this flow state. And this is where time loses meaning. We forget to eat, we forget to check our phone, we forget to look at the time, we're just absorbed in the work we're doing. And one amazing 10 year study showed that people who are in flow state are 500% more productive. Furthermore, this isn't voodoo, right? This isn't magic. Electroencephalography or EEG shows that there are different patterns in brain waves when we're actually in a flow state. So this flow state is real and it's really beneficial. How do we achieve it? So number one, the topic that you're working on should be sufficiently difficult and you should have sufficient expertise in that topic. Number two, you should develop some reasoning as to why this task is important or why it's important that you accomplish this goal. Number three, try to focus on the work you're doing, the journey of the work you're doing as opposed to the end goal or the final product. And number four, we're jumping back to metacognition already. Pay attention to how you got into flow state. How did you get into flow state before? How did you stay in flow state longer? Can you use these techniques to get yourself back into flow state? Tip number four is to remove distractions. Our physical environment shapes our cognitive ability and our ability to focus. In one study, participants were asked to listen to an audio book and then were tested on their ability to maintain focus and answer questions about the audiobook. However, the participants were split into two groups. One was a controlled setting in a very isolated lab, and the other was a non-controlled setting kind of outside the lab. Imagine walking around, seeing beakers, people milling about, things like this. So in the zone outside of the lab with people milling about and stuff like that, distraction rates were 33% higher and their test performance was 20% worse. And these are significant results, right? Being in a distraction-free zone could increase your amount of time spent studying focused by a third and increase your grades by a whole letter grade. So say you study 10 hours a day, but 10 of those hours a day is all in a distracted environment with lots of noise, things going on, whatever and you only study maybe five hours out of that 10 hours. Well, if you move into a distraction-free environment based on these study results, you could add an additional three hours of focused studying per day. Tip number five is to take intermittent breaks. People take breaks to have higher cognitive performance and can focus for longer. And let's make the cliche comparison to running here. Staying focused for a long time is a marathon, it's not a sprint. People who run marathons take breaks not only in their training for the marathon, but they also take breaks during the actual marathon. And one study which looked at a bunch of other studies, right, on breaks and focus said, overall, the data support the role of micro breaks for well-being, while for performance, recovering from highly depleting tasks may need more than a 10 minute break. They also concluded that micro breaks positively impacted well-being by enhancing vigor and lowering fatigue, regardless of contextual factors. And my favorite break technique is the Pomodoro method. I've talked about it so much. And if you've watched my videos, you can probably skip to the next tip, but basically it's 25 minutes of studying, five minute break, 25 minutes of studying, five minute break, 25 minutes of studying, five minute break, 25 minutes of studying, 30 minute break. So really it's about every two hours, you should take maybe 30 to 40 minutes of break total. And I have a whole other video on the Pomodoro technique, which you can check out up here. But what breaks should you take? I think the best breaks are in order of best to worst, going outside, having a mini exercise session, grabbing a healthy snack, meditating, cleaning up your space, napping, or chatting with a friend. Tip number six is to chunk or stratify your tasks. George Miller released his seminal paper in the 1950s, which said humans can only remember seven plus or minus two objects at one time in their short-term memory bank. And many psychologists and academics today call this Miller's law. 
And we need to use Miller's law to maximize our performance and maximize our ability to stay focused in short chunks. So what sounds more daunting, right? So when I wake up tomorrow, I'm gonna study for my huge biology test at the end of the week. Or when I wake up between seven and nine o'clock, I'll do the first 20 practice questions on chapter one of biology. Then, you know, I'll take a 20 minute, 30 minute break or an hour break to go do some exercise. And then I'll come back, do another 20 practice questions for an hour or two, go have some lunch. And then I'll come back and maybe talk about studying with my friends or do a group study session. That sounds much more reasonable. And I know what I'm getting into the next day because I've broken up my studying into smaller tasks. Because when you think, oh, I'm just gonna study for my biology test, there's so many chapters, there's so many resources, there's so many ways you can study that it becomes a little bit overwhelming. And as Miller said, right, we can't remember or keep track of all this information, so we just get lost. It's much better to chunk or stratify your studying or your focus sessions, right, into tasks that you can actually make sense of in your head. Tip number seven is understand the why. Shift your mindset from I have to focus or I have to get to work from I get to focus, I get to get to work. And usually a lot of us, including myself, do things because we have to do them. But me thinking to myself, okay, I have to do this, isn't really gonna inspire laser focus. Whatever I'm working on, I like to ask myself why, 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 again, like that annoying kid in the background, because it helps me come up for a reason, kind of why I'm studying, why I'm doing these things. And you have to keep asking yourself why until you come up with an answer that makes sense to you, that gives your studying, that gives your focusing meaning. And if you can't come up with an answer that gives your focusing meaning, it might really be time to think about what you're focusing on. And this is a hard thing to say and a tough thing to say, but this exercise has saved me probably five or six times in life from going down a path that I really didn't want to do. But hopefully you come up with a good reason why, right? And then you can set concrete goals because the evidence shows that once you set concrete goals, your performance improves. And one little sneaky bonus tip here, if you want to trick yourself into having a why, you can treat whatever you're focusing on as a project. Maybe it actually is a project, but maybe it's not a project like studying for biology or something like that. And professors in chemistry have actually trialed this and experiment and they found that when they were teaching their students in the form of projects as opposed to just studying for a test studying for a test studying for a test their engagement and performance improved dramatically so maybe you aren't just studying biology maybe you are inventing the next super cell that will grow the next superhuman that will change the world right what is your cell going to have inside of it is it going to have big ribosomes or small ribosomes is it going to have a really long endoplasmic reticulum or a short and narrow endoplasmic reticulum and again this isn't reasonable right because it's i mean maybe in the future but now it's tough to make a cell like that but doing this project will help you learn about all these different parts of the cell that you need to know for your test, right? Tip number eight, make it a habit and forget about motivation because motivation is a myth. Consistent focus over time is the key to success in whatever your endeavor is. And this is the point of this video and this is sneakily the most important tip of this entire video. If focusing can become a habit, if focusing can become the status quo, it will change your life and you will blow by your peers. And your focus will be conditioned into yourself and once you do it long enough, it'll be at this magic point where you don't even think about. You just sit down and you focus for hours and hours and hours at a time and you accomplish all your goals. This is what I still strive for. This is what I still work on to this day. And here are some quick tips to kind of maximize your focus and this habit building of focus. Have one seat, have one location where you always focus. Maybe this is at a desk, maybe this is in a room, maybe this is at a seat at a table. As soon as you sit down at this place, as soon as you open this computer, it's focus time. If you have to stop working, that's okay. Just don't stop working at this location. Get up, go somewhere else, sit on the couch and goof off on your phone or something like that. But never do that in your focus location. What we're doing here is we're classically conditioning ourselves to, okay, as soon as I sit down in this chair, it's focus time. And when I get up and move around, it's okay. But every time you break that rule inside of this chair, you're hurting the habit just a little bit. But every time you stay focused and stay working, as soon as you sit in this chair, 
you're building that habit. Try to have consistent times during the day when you're focusing, right? And we'll go into later about how you should pick these times, but when you pick a time, stick to it. This will help build the habit inside your health. Okay, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., I'm gonna be focusing on studying or working or my job or something like that. And there is a bunch of evidence that shows people who, for example, wake up and go to bed at the same time consistently, not only have much higher levels of sleep quality, but they also live longer. So for example, for me, I usually do really good work first thing in the morning. So I'll wake up, get some coffee, and then do really deep work from kind of six to nine in the morning. And then I'll kind of go to the gym, maybe from nine to 10.30, come home, shower, have some lunch, um, and then get back to work around 12 or one to three o'clock. Then I'll take a break. Again, this could be going for a walk, meditating, exercising, something like that. Uh, and then I'll get back on my horse from about four to 5.30. Then I'll have dinner, and kind of relax after that. But because I've set these times and because I know these are the times that I'm working, I usually find it much easier to get to focusing at that time. For example, I'm recording this video around what is it now? It's probably 8.30 in the morning because this is my focus time. Another tip is to use habit stacking by Atomic Habits to make your focus times a habit. For example, if you normally always take a shower in the morning, maybe after the shower, it's focus time. Or if you normally always eat breakfast in the morning, maybe right after breakfast, it's focus time or after you put on your clothes or something like this. The whole point of this is you already have a habit. Now you're just habit stacking, putting this habit on the other habit, which makes it easier to adopt a new habit. How many times did I say habit in the last one minute? I think 22 times. Tip number nine is to find your perfect study time. When during the day do you do better work? When during the day do you do worse work? When during the day do you do the best analytical work? So maybe that's math problems or reading a paper or something like that. When during the day do you do the best creative work? So maybe that's like writing or doing some art or something like that. Figure out those times, and I have another video which I'll link kind of on how to figure out those times, and then apply that to kind of when you're gonna focus. I'll also link to a good Huberman video where he talks about kind of finding the perfect focus time and some other focus tips that you can check out to see if you can find kind of your perfect focus zone. But I think you know kind of when you focus the best. I kind of intrinsically know when I focus the best and it's early in the morning. And the last two tips are about health. So tip number 10 is to focus on your health. And even though this is tip number 10, it should be the first thing you do. It should be the first thing you check on before going and pulling all these other levers. Now, even though I am a doctor, I'm not your doctor. You should ask your doctor and talk to your doctor about maybe are there things that could be affecting your focus. Maybe you have a certain condition uh, that will affect your focus, or maybe you take a certain medication that could affect your focus. Now, probably 90% of the people, neither of those things are true, but if it is true for you, you should figure out the best way to optimize that for yourself. For example, someone with ADHD who's on medication might take this medication and then perform best about an hour after they take this medication. I'm just making this up. This isn't medical advice. Don't change anything until you talk to your doctor, please. Maybe someone with insomnia who takes medication to go to sleep probably can't focus as well an hour after they take that medication, right? So talk to your doctor and really think about times and the best way to optimize your focus based on your health conditions. And if you have some health condition that you're not taking care of, that you're not managing, this can affect your focus too. So personally, what have been the highest impact things on my health that have improved focus? Well, big surprise here, my number number one answer above everything else is sleep. If you can go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time, have continuous and high quality sleep, sleep for at least seven hours a night consistently, your focus is gonna be leaps and bounds above people who are sleeping only five hours a night with interrupted sleep in improper conditions such as very loud or light up settings or they're drinking before bed every night. Things like this are gonna make you kind of perform much better than those people. It's just science. It's not me saying it, it's the evidence saying it. But other things that have improved my focus, right, are exercise. I think exercise can improve focus a lot. And mindfulness meditation, uh, when you have to sit there and kind of try to think about nothing or focus on one thing, it helps to build that muscle of kind of staying focused for longer periods of time. So overall for this tip, and again, I think this is the first tip you should do, talk to your doctor, talk to your healthcare professional, and kind of see if there's any things you can optimize to improve your focus, or see if there's any health conditions that you're missing on that might be affecting your focus. But I'd say a lot of these things can be fixed by proper sleep, proper exercise, and proper diet.
And the final tip is another health bonus, is to increase physical activity. Again, talk to your doctor before you go crazy here, but physical activity, people who are physically active can focus longer and, and more intensely than people who aren't physically active. And here's just a couple of the research papers that I saw. Molecules such as IGF-1, insulin growth factor one, a fancy molecule, are released during exercise that may be responsible for maintaining brain cells and are directly related to spatial learning and memory. Another molecule, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, is a significant modulator of brain plasticity. It's also released more during exercise than non-exercise. And finally, evidence shows that activity or exercise in humans and mice increases hippocampal neurogenesis, and that's the part of our brain that's responsible for memory, cell proliferation, and dendritic branching. What do all those fancy words mean? Basically it means when you exercise, you make more brain connections, and you can probably focus and learn better. That's it. Also, I know from previous videos I've made on this that exercise can help reduce stress and anxiety, and when you're stressed and anxious, you just can't focus as well as someone who's not stressed and anxious. And here's a little bonus thing while I was doing my research that I found really interesting. They did a study where they looked at 115 kind of students who were taking physical exercise classes and the impact this had on their focus. And they had two groups, right? They had one group that was doing, you know, your normal exercise of running, push-ups, stuff like this. And you had another group of students who were doing coordination exercises. And all coordination exercises are, are like doing jump rope or juggling or something that's requiring a little bit more mental effort while you're exercising. Now, the students who practiced the coordination exercise were actually able to focus longer and perform better on tests than the students who just did regular exercise. And they controlled for heart rate, so the heart rates of the students were about averagely equal uh, when they did this analysis of this study. So if you wanna level up your focus, really exercising will help you out a ton. But if you wanna get really nerdy about it, maybe you do some ladder exercises or you try some juggling or some jump rope to get that little bit of extra mental ability from your exercise. So that is it. Those are 11 advanced tips to improve of your focus. And in the long run, these focusing tips will really change your life. But if I had to say there were three things, three of my tips that were the most impactful, I'd say number one is pay attention to your health. You get that in order and a lot of other things will be fixed. Number two, pay attention to metacognition. How are you thinking? Why are you thinking? And what are you thinking about? Can you fix or change these thoughts to help you perform in the way you want to perform? And finally, number three, the next tip I would say is just plan everything. Planning makes it easy to perform the task and makes you have like less stress when you're trying to study or focus or anything like that. Uh, but that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you focused during the entirety of this video, well, you're just top, top bluebies, top bluebies. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Oh, oh, oh. Can't believe someone of my intellect is stuck with the likes of this idiot. Yeah, I, I can hear everything. Oh, you're of course, saying. I'm simply speaking about a different student right. I was teaching before. Clearly, look at you, smart fellow.